I'm going to focus now on Microsoft Access, your database program, uh, where you put in all the data, like for instance, Coltec, the students' uh, Coltec, where all the students' information is saved. So you open database, and then you will create a blank database. I'm just using an example of a database that we will create. You will need to give your database a file name. So you will have to look at your instructions. If we look on the left hand side here, open the MS Access program and create a database, Tomatoes. So my database name must be Tomatoes and your examination number. Then you will click on Create. As soon as you click on create, this is the page that you will open up to your toolbars on top and your different options that you can use. For me to create a database, I will have to go to view because I need to design my database first. I need to put in what information do I need in my database that I'm creating. So I click on view and then I click on design view. As soon as I click on design view, I will have to give my table a name. So let's see what do they tell me. Create the table below and save it as tomato stock and your examination number. So my table name should be tomato stock and my examination number. Then you click on OK. Now I am in the design view of my table. Here I can now tell the program what field names, what information do I need in my database and what data type will be used. When you open Access, the field name ID is an automatic default field name. It will always be there every time you open database. So you need to look at your instructions. Is the ID field needed? Must I keep it there? Or must I delete it and replace it with something else? If we look at our instructions on the left here, we don't see an ID field. There's no field name called ID. So we will have to delete that ID field. We will have to replace it. So the first field name they give me is code of item code of item. You will see that your instructions will be in three stages. The field name, the data type, and the field size or format. You have to do all three of those things for each and every field name. So there's my field name is code of item. Then my data type if you look at access, there's my data type. As soon as I click there, my little down arrow appears. When I click on the down arrow, there's different options of data type that I can put in. If I look at my instruction, this data type should be text. So let's make it long text. Okay. And then what must the format be of this field? Or the size of this field the text must be four so we can make this actually then short text and we can make at the bottom you'll see field size you delete whatever is there and you make it the four that they instruct you let's go to the next one name of product name of product data type is also text so i can Click on my down arrow, select short text. Field size should be 25. Next instruction or the next field name, supplier is also text. Field size, 15. 15. Next one is date. Received. Date received, the data type is date or short date. Go to date and time. Format. 
What type of date must this be? They tell me it's a short date. So I click on format and I click on the down arrow. Here I've got my different options. General date, long date, medium date, short date. That's what I'm looking for. Then I make it short date. Next one, price of stock must be currency. My data type must be currency. And with two decimals. At the bottom it says format is currency. Decimal places is auto. They don't want it auto. They want it two decimals. So if I click on auto, there's my down arrow. Click on the down arrow and here I can choose from 0 to 14. So it must be two decimal places. And my last one is stock available. Stock available. And the data type is yes or no. My data type is a yes or a no. There's my yes or no. And I don't change anything by the format or the field size. Now I'm done. I've set up my, my, my structure. I've designed my table or my um, database. The next instruction says, do not set a primary key. Now, people on the left-hand side here of your field name in the gray area, if, you, if they tell us to make code of item the primary key, we can right-click next to code of item and make it a primary key. Then you'll see that little golden key appears there. Or I can just click on primary key again to take it away. The instruction says, do not set a primary key. Then they tell us, save the table and print the structure of the database. Now, people, the structure is a very, very important part of database. You will have to print a structure. So after creating my structure, I click on the little cross to close it. My next question is, do you want to save? Yes, I want to. To save. Now on the left hand side you will see under tables there's your tomato stock table that you created. If I want to print this unfortunately it not, it's not just file and you'll see print is not even available. So we'll have to go the long way. Database tools, database documenter, select all, Options. In my options menu, I make sure that only names, data types, and sizes are selected and nothing else. OK. And I click on OK again. And there's my structure that I will have to print. Now, before you print the structure, make sure that your information is correct on the structure. Your the field name, your type and your size, especially the sizes, because you will get marks for each one of those. You will get marks for the, for the uh, database name, the table name, and for each field and size that you put in, and for printing the structure. Now, when I get here, I can go to print, and I can print it normally like I would. Then I close my print preview. That is how you create a structure or a table in database.